In the first place, you don't know he drinks. All you know is he's in AA, and the thing about them is they don't drink. And in the second place, you got anything to show he's giving away our designs? Well, not so far. What do you mean, not so far, Charlie? You gotta stop this. A uh, drunk like that could give the company a bad name. Fogging phones could give the company a bad name, too. Well, suppose I could prove to you that he's a drunk. Would you go along we should fire him? Well, I'd have to think about it. We could bug his home phone. You see, and... Hey, listen, Gordon, everybody's asking for you and Charlie. What do you mean breaking in here like this? We could have been talking about something personal. Hey, well, we bugged Bernie's home phone. The tape proved Bernie didn't drink. Wasn't stealing our designs. But the tape showed something else. <laughs> Bernie had a thing going on with the secretary. Charlie was sure she was the leak. He wanted to bug her home phone, too. We had a big fight about it. I tell you, a person who would steal has got no right. And I tell you, this is wrong. The fight got us nowhere. So we made a deal. Now, I want to make sure we got it straight, Charlie. I agree we bug her phone. You agree that if we don't find out anything about stealing designs only, that we call off all this bugging. That's it. Fair is fair. Fair was fair, of course. I found that out when we heard the tape. Oh, look, Bernie, honey. Don't call again tonight, huh? I gotta get some sleep. <laughs> it's not that. I know it's not. You have a secret boyfriend. Oh, where would I find the time, huh? Between you and the office. And it's someone in the office. Oh, honey, you found me out. All right, who is it? I demand to know. Well, it's, uh, it's the runt. So? Yeah, so the runt creeps into my tent the moment you leave. <laughs> and I'm falling the runt. Shut <laughs> that off. Well, have you heard enough, Saul? Who's she to call me a runt? Well, these are not loyal people, Saul. It's just like I said, you've got to check on people like this to hear such things. And that's only the beginning, Saul. How do we know what they're saying when they're not on the telephone? It's probably even worse. Now, we have a right to know that, Saul. We feed them out. You're right, Charlie. But I wish we never started this. <laughs> Charlie and I went on. Bugged the wall in Bernie's home and in the secretary's home. Night after night, we listened to the tapes. No, Mother, I am not losing weight. I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah, I weighed myself. Three pounds of tomatoes and a loaf of bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Because I'm not interested in mutual funds, so will you... I... I hate to be the one to tell you, George, but... Daddy's dead. No, Ma, all my cigarettes are out. You smell smoke. Over the phone? <laughs> I do not look like Sophia Lauren. In or out of a bathing suit. And you know it. We didn't prove a thing. Finally, I came as close to my senses as I was going to get. And tried to bring the whole thing to a halt. Charlie didn't agree. I tell you, we just haven't gone far enough. Charlie, there's got to be a limit. What limit? These people are out to destroy us. What people? We haven't found out a single thing about anybody. <laughs> that's my point. And that's why we got to go after them. But where's your limit, Charlie? There's no limit. No limit, Charlie? No limit. Then why don't we bug the phone of our other designer? You must be out of your mind. Why? There's nothing wrong with Phil. How do we know? We haven't bugged this phone. I guarantee you it wouldn't prove a thing. And maybe we could bug his home, too. Ah, oh, that's stupid. Why? Because he's a kid. Do we bug only old people? You said there was no limit. We can't bug Phil. Why not? Because he's our kid brother. 
afraid. He's not married, and they, they get into all kinds of situations. And frankly, I just as soon not know about them. There's something you don't want to know? Some things it isn't right you should hear. Charlie, you said there wasn't any limits. You'd bug the phone of your own brother? Which one? Just having an argument. 
It's nothing that concerns you. Did I hear somebody say something about bugging phone? Yes. Yes. We've been getting some of our designs stolen. So we think maybe somebody's bugging our phone. <laughs> Isn't he just beautiful? Hey, how you doing with the bucket, pal? Ah, uh, beautiful. Well, you were great at the party. <laughs> like I told you, Phil, you're I, a kid. I uh, guess you know the Jacobson brothers pretty good by now. That golden rule you said, Phil, well, these days, the golden rule is do unto others before they get a chance to do unto you. <laughs> when did you first decide to bug their phones, Mr. Jacobson? The day I found out they were bugging mine. If you don't get them first, Phil, they'll get you. You're all right to do it, Mr. Jacobson. We've got some pretty hot stuff on you. I've been telling you all along. Not so. my girlfriend. A person no, I like. Why I want mm. you. Now you're even, Thank huh? You. It's dog eat dog. Well, you have to protect me. yourself. There's no end to where this kind of thing can go. Oh, you're so right. And it's already gone too far. Huh? Mr. Jacobson... What are you doing with that gun? It's dog eat dog, bug eat bug. Eat this. Don't shoot, Mr. Jacobson, not me. Oh. Yeah. All right, so. So, we got a little information on you. I wouldn't sell it. I. I'll give you all the tape. I. Theater 5 has presented...
presented To Whom It May Concern, written by Bill Jammy and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Jackson Beck, Dan Ocko, Larry Haynes, Natalie Priest, and Robert Dryden. Audio engineer, Neil Fulton. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasovsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Oster. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. 